pledge allegiance to the Lamb. You know, a lot of people, uh, we got a pledge allegiance to the, to the American flag, and you know, that's good. We need the American flag, and we're going to talk about our freedom here today. Uh, if you have your Bible, as I'm speaking, you can turn to 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. We're going to be taking verses uh, 1 through 6. I'll be reading out of the NIV today. Turn to your neighbor and give him a high five and say, it's good to see you. Come on, it's good to see you. Amen. It's good to see you guys. I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. To the Lamb. Here's what someone wrote about only in America. Only in America. Only in America are there handicapped parking places in front of a skating rink. Y'all can laugh. Took me a long time to get this stuff. Y'all can laugh. Only in America do drugstores make the sick walk all the way to the back to get their prescription while healthy people can buy cigarettes up front. That's funny. I don't care what y'all say. Only in America do people order double cheeseburger, large fry, and supersize a Diet Coke. I'm not lying, it's me. <laughs> I'm not lying. It's me there. Only in America do we buy hot dogs in the package of 10 and buns in the package of 8. <laughs> Crazy. Only in America do we have answering machines to screen calls and have call waiting so we won't miss a call from someone who we didn't even want to talk to anyway. <laughs> Only in America. You know, we've been celebrating all week our freedom. And man, I praise God that this morning I don't have an M16 to my head and be challenged if I'll lose my life if I serve God. That's why I don't understand America. We've got the freedom to do what we need to do for Jesus, and we're sitting back, not doing anything for Him. We're the most blessed nation in the whole wide world. America is a great place to live. While it's not a perfect place, not like heaven will be, but it's a lot better than most nations in the world today. I still believe that America is the greatest nation in the world. I feel blessed by God to have been born and raised in the good old USA. If you believe that today, let's give God a hand clap. You could have been born somewhere else, but God chose to plant you here in the USA. First Timothy chapter 2, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie, this sermon is raw Christianity. <laughs> this is going to be some tough stuff that I'm going to say today. It's... Um, Hold on to your toes um, because it's, it's going to be truth spoken in this church service. Listen, if we want to take America back, the Christians must rise up. Now, we got a head knowledge of this, but today I'm hoping it'll fall 16, 16 inches into your heart. If we as Christians, no, statistics say that this is a Christian nation, but you could not prove that by lifestyle. You could not Prove that if you're looking at the government. Now, if President Barack Obama gets this sermon, y'all pray for me because um, I'll probably be dead after this one. Now, I'm not going to blast him, but I'm going to tell you what this country is needing. And people say, well, it needs Jesus. Duh. Yes, it needs Jesus. But I'm going to show you three points today how we need to keep America great. First Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. If you're there, say amen. He says these words, I urge... And I love that. I thought about speaking to someone about the urgency of Christ. He said, I urge you, listen to me, what I'm telling you today. He says, then first of all, th that request, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone. Prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone. Prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving made for everyone. He said, for kings, listen to this, and all those in what? Authority. That we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all goodness and holiness. Verse 3. This is good. This is good and pleases God our Savior. Listen, God wants us to have peace in our life. Listen to me. Do you have peace this morning? Are you a peaceful person this morning? Can you look deep down in your soul right now and say, I have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. 
that can you say honest to goodness, no matter, watch me, what your family's going through, how your children are acting, or what even how you feel this morning, can you look deep down into your soul and into your spirit and say, hallelujah, I've got the peace of God in my life. Can y'all testify to that? That no matter what's going on, I've got the peace of God in my life. Most people cannot say that because most people, they, 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 they have their happiness based upon a circumstance. Listen, you're not a circumstantial people. It is a, we are a factual people. Hallelujah. We know the truth and the truth will set us free if we apply it to our life. We know the truth. We know Jesus is the answer. We know coming to church, it won't fix you, but hallelujah to help you. Here, people tell me all the time, well, I, I just like to go fishing, hunting, and all this other stuff, and I find Jesus out in the woods. Isn't it a funny thing? Nobody's ever came back to church and said, I got a testimony today. I led a bear to Jesus Christ. No one's ever went deep sea fishing and, and, and saved Shamu. Nobody's ever saved an animal. But here's what I want to tell you is we as God's people must have the urgency in our life to become the light and the salt and the flavor of God in a dying society that needs the Lord. What this world wants God. I'm so sick and tired of people saying the world don't want God. Let me tell you something. They want the truth. People who are lost and dying and disconnected from God, they, they want the truth. The problem is this. Nobody is saying anything about Jesus. Nobody is saying anything about God. And it bothers me that nobody's rising up. Look what it says in verse 4. This verse right here beats all Calvinism to death. It, it beats it with the Bible. Hallelujah. Look here in verse 4. Who, this is talking about God our Savior, who wants how many men? How many men? God does, want, does not want no one to be lost and die and burn in hell. Hell is as real as heaven. But I'm telling you, God wants people, all people, saved. I don't care what the Kentucky Baptist Convention, I don't care what the Southern Baptist Convention, I don't care what intervention you have on your behalf. I'm telling you, God wants all people saved by His grace. God did not die on the cross for nobody to go to hell. Somebody needs to testify today that if you're under my voice today, there is hope for you in this house. No one, watch this, no one should die and go to hell here today. No one should die and go to hell here today. He says, I pray. He said, I, I want all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of what? Truth. Truth. For there is one God. I love this. There's only one God. Muhammad's still dead. Buddha's still dead. There's only one God who got out of the grave, and his name is Jesus Christ. He's one Lord, one Savior, one God. He's still captain today, and he'll never lose your power with God on his throne. Amen? Woo! Thank you, Lord. He's still God. He's still God. He's one Lord, one Savior, one God, one baptism. One Lord, one Savior, one baptism. He's still God. Every other God is still six feet under. They will stay under. <laughs> They've not got back up. Only one man has got back out of the grave. His name is Jesus Christ. And God said, who gave himself as a ransom for all men. The testimony given is in its proper time. In its proper time. God says, I died on the cross to be a testimony to you and I today of the goodness of God in which you should proclaim his name. I'm going to give you three things you must do to keep America great. And I want you all to listen to me today. This is a, a word I really believe God laid on my heart just for you and I today. Number one, out of the three things we must do to keep America great, number one is pray for America. Pray for America. July the 4th. Everybody say July the 4th. 1776. Listen to this. This was 237 years ago. The Declaration of Independence was signed by 56 brave men. And do you realize what it took for them to pin on a piece of paper them saying, I bless America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Five out of these 56 men, I wrote this down, listen to me. Five out of these 56 men were captured. They were beaten and tortured and eventually they were starved to death. Twelve had their homes burned to the ground. Four of these men lost their children by signing 
the Declaration of Independence. Nine fought, and they died from the wounds that they had on their body. And all the rest of these men, they died in poverty. Our founding fathers raised their hands. I want you to listen to me. They sat there around the table, and they raised their hands under an oath. Under an oath for me and you today. They didn't know who you were. They didn't understand everything, but they knew that if they could raise their hands and put their hand on the Bible and say, God, here's what they said, these words. They said these words. They raised their hands. They said, I pledge my life. I pledge my money, my fortune, and I pledge my sacred honor to this Declaration of Independence. Congress were meeting one day, and listen to this. They were debating how the Declaration of Independence should be written. And Ben Franklin stood up and said, Gentlemen, I love this. If it is true that not one single petal falls from the flower and falls to the ground without escaping God's attention, will the prayers of this nation go unheeded? Let us therefore, this is what he said, determine to seek his face and the face of the Lord. Hallelujah. Could you imagine what would happen today? I love this. But what would happen today if our Congress and our Supreme Court and the president of this nation would say, if not one petal can fall to the ground, escaping the eyes and the attention of God, how much more would our prayers get the attention of God? What would happen if they said, Almighty God, what do you want from this nation? See, my prayer today is that we as God's people would get back on our knees. Do you realize before they signed the Declaration of Independence, they was in a room and they prayed for two and a half hours straight. Lord, you asked for a prayer meeting on a Wednesday night, and you may get 50 people. Lord, if you say we're having a prayer meeting tonight, you may get 50 or 60 people. I'm telling you and I'm declaring today what America needs is a straight touch from Jesus Christ. We need to fall back on our knees and start crying out, God Almighty, what do you want from America and not what we can do? We need a touch from the Lord. They prayed for hours seeking the face of God. And I love Ben Franklin's last words he wrote. He said these words, truly, the Declaration of Independence is God-breathed. Can you say this morning that truly my appointment from God is breathed? I am God-breathed. See, we need to be like Daniel in the lion's den. When Daniel was in the lion's den, he didn't let the wolves or he didn't let the lions, he didn't let the people mess him up because why he kept his eyes in the east. We need to be like Hezekiah. Hezekiah got a death warrant, and his Bible said, he said these words, Hezekiah, get your house in order because you're going to die. How many of you know in here you're going to die unless the rapture takes place? Watch this, 100% business meeting, y'all ready? Unless the rapture takes place, you will die. You will die. You need to live every day like it's your last day. If it was your last day today, what would you do different? I guarantee you some people would be on the phones crying out and saying, I'm sorry. Some people would make amends with your children. Some people would make amends with your parents. Let me tell you something. Unforgiveness will send you straight to hell. There's got to be a time that Christians will man up and look at this Bible and say, this is what God said. I may not like it. I may not agree with it. But hallelujah, anyhow, this is what God said. And I'm going to follow the instruction manual. I'm going to follow the word. Put your face to the wall like Hezekiah did, and you never know. God gave Hezekiah 15 more years. See, I'm telling you what America needs today. We need to pray for America. Number two, three things we must do to keep America great. Number one, pray for America. Everybody say, pray for America. Come on, pray for America. We got to pray, 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 pray. I'm not going to stop, I'm not going to stop, and y'all at least say amen. We need to pray, pray. Pray, and you say, Brian, I do pray. No, I'm talking about five minutes in your sorrow. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you hang on to the horns of the altar and say, God, I'm not leaving until you bless me. I'm not going to shut up until you answer me. God, I'm going to pray up until you come back. You say, Brian, really? See, here's the amazing thing. Here's the amazing thing. As I am preaching, I am praying. That's what the Spirit will do. As I am preaching the word of God over you, I am praying a blessing over you. 
See, what you don't realize, the spiritual world is so much more bigger than what you realize. We think that we are so big here in America, we're not. We're just the end of a pencil head compared to how big America really is. This world is big. Number two is live righteous lives. Live righteous lives. Righteousness means right living. Everybody say right living. See, a lot of people think it's about right giving. No, it's about right living. It's about right living. The number one book that framed our nation's government was the Holy Bible. Do you realize we are the nation, the most blessed nation, because men sat around a table with a Bible in their hand and the Spirit of God on them, and they made every decision based upon this right here? Let me ask you a question. Are you making every decision of your life based upon Holy Scripture? And according to my counseling meetings, no, we're not. According to what I see about divorce rate, no, we're not. Marriages and divorces rate are over 50%, even among Christians. Even among Christians. Teenage pregnancies, watch this. Teenage pregnancies, are half, are half of them end up in abortion. 1971, when Rose versus Wade, man, I'm telling you, the reason why they won is because the Americans, the Christian people, did not stand up and say, God is pro-life. God is about giving life. God is not about taking life. I know y'all may not like preaching like this, but it's good Bible preaching teaching. We need to be a God people. You know why school, why prayer got out of school? Because Christians didn't stand up. If Christians would stand up and quit shutting up, maybe we'll see some things show up. That's a good word right there. If Christians would pray up and quit shutting up, maybe we'll see some God things show up. I'm going to say it again. If Christians would pray up instead of shutting up, maybe we'll see some God things show up. Did y'all get that? Write it down because that's a word from the Lord. If you want a hot, steaming, rocking marriage, pray for your wife. Wives, you need to lay hands on your husband and pray a double portion. Y'all get that later. Prayer changes things. Prayer moves heaven. Prayer will shake this building to the post back that it was founded on. Prayer will move a mountain. Prayer will make cancer flee. Hallelujah. Prayer will make things that look bad look good. Prayer will change everything you're going through because God loves praying people. And you say, Brian, I pray. How long? How long, if you had to sum your, your day up, how long do you spend in prayer? You say, Brian, I pray on the road. That's good. Keep your eyes open. But I'm talking about closet prayer. I'm talking about going in and finding the presence of God. I'm talking about going in your room, turning some praise and worship on, shutting your door, opening the Word of God, and saying, God, here I am. Fill me up. Run over in me, God. Spill out in me, Lord. Do what you got to do, God. Here I am, Jesus. Say, Brian, is that how you pray? You ought to hear me. Prayer is no joke. Most people pray when they're in a bad situation. And sometimes I think God allows a bad situation in your life so he can hear you pray. Whoops. I did it again. 60% of 12 and 18-year-olds who claim to be Christian are sexually active. You will not find God in the back seat on a Friday night. You say, Brian, I don't like this type of prayer. That's your problem. You won't have truth. But I'm telling you today under the unction of God, if we want to rise up and take America back, Christians have got to rise up and pray up until he shows up. That's what we got to do, guys. And the worst thing that will happen today is that you walk out that door and say, boy, Brian, he, he was on fire today. And boy, Brian preached hellfire and brimstone today and nothing changed in your life. That's America. Scott, I'm telling you, if America's Christians would show up, I'm telling you, abortion would go down. I'm telling you, watch me, if men of God would step up and be men of God of your household, there would be less problems in your household. Oops. I told you guys this is going to be tough. But I'm telling you, I'm wrapping it in love this morning the best way I can. The reason why America is doing and living the way America wants to do is because that's what Americans want. A man or woman's going to do what a man or woman wants to do. 
I've done figured that one out. You know, some people want to take in God we trust off the money. Y'all heard about that? Some people are trying to take under God out of the Pledge of Allegiance to the American flag. Y'all have heard about that. Some are trying to take the Ten Commandments out of the public view. Y'all heard about that. Some are trying to eliminate even the name of God out of the schools and out of the, everywhere you go. They say, oh, don't talk about him. That offends me. I would much rather offend somebody and get them to heaven than them love me and die and go to hell. We got to stand up for the truth here in America. I'm preaching as hard and as good as I can. What Americans need is a good old-fashioned, I don't care what y'all say, Holy Ghost butt-kicking by the Holy Spirit behind the Holy God woodshed, and God will straighten America out. We need a touch from the Lord. And I declare today the Bible back over this church. I declare the Word of God back on your life. I declare, don't you wait for Sunday to come to church, and then I say, turn to 1 Timothy chapter 2. I pray and declare today a good old, good old Bible teaching, amen, a good old Word of God back in the church. A good, I'm telling you, I want God to show up so thick that you can't even move. I want God to grab the foundations of Elkhorn and shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, until it can't be shaken no more. I want sin to be demolished, and I want holiness to rise up. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. I pray, Dr. A.W. Towser said these words, he's in a revival. And he said the Spirit of God was so thick, people were crawling to the altar. Mamas and daddies were reconciling their marriages. Mamas and daddies were, were getting things right where it needed to be. I'm going to tell you today, the world does not revolve around you and me. What we need is to go back to godly principles. Now, I know who? People say, well, Brian, why did God send you to a Baptist church? You should have been a Pentecostal. That ain't where God wanted me. God wanted me here for such a time as this to pray blessings of anointing over this church and over this house. To preach the infallible, the inerrant word of God. The word that will go forward and not return void. I feel you, Lord. The word that will get in people's minds and their hearts and change their life. I'm telling you, what we need is a word from the Lord. What we need is to fear the Lord again as America. What we need is to get back on our knees and cry out, Jehovah God, one more time. What we need is to call sin, sin. Right, right. Black, black, white, white, it don't matter. I'm telling you, sin will separate you from the Lord. We need some people back in the pulpits. We need the John Hagees in the pulpit. We need the people of God, the Jensen Franklins and the T.D. Jakes, and we need the people, the James Merritts back in the pulpit that are going, and Adrian Rogers was with the Lord, but here's what I found out this week, Don, it's amazing. Adrian Rogers is reaching more people today than he was when he was alive. More people are listening to his recordings and his preachings today, and he's with the Lord. More people are getting saved today because I'm telling you, what I'm trying to plead over you today is that my God is good. His mercy endures forever. His grace is good, and you can't stop my Jesus. Amen? Somebody praise him. You can't stop him. We sing a little song here at this church. God's word is powerful and mighty. Mighty, mighty is God's word that makes the devil tremble. Beat that big bad devil with a Bible verse. Word. God's word. God's word is powerful. God's word is powerful and mighty. Mighty, mighty is God's word. God, mighty is God's word. That's all I know. It makes the devil tremble. Beat. Yeah. You can tell I'm not Greg Ford. I don't look like him. I don't act like him. I don't claim to be Greg Ford. 
I'm not a music leader, but I will tell you this. That's the truth. You want to win in your life, you grab a Bible. You want to have victorious living in your life? You've got to decrease as God increases. And God increases, He'll give you power. He'll give you love. He'll give you a sound mind. He'll declare blessings over your life. And I promise you, you'll live like you've never lived before. Because my God is good. My God is mighty. My God is big. He's good. Hallelujah. Woo. I like it. Beat that big bad devil with the Bible verse. I can't get that out of my heart. You want victory? Beat that big bad devil with the Bible. Peace. <laughs> Be Ralph out, you know? <laughs> Number three. Number one is pray for America. Number two is live righteous lives. Man, I feel the Lord. Number three is share Christ. Why is America dying and going to hell? Because Christians are not sharing Jesus. We have had so much church here that we ought to be flaming evangelists. The word of God should be so deep in our spirits that when you walk out that door, I feel sorry for restaurants today. <laughs> We should have so much of God in us, he should be sticking out our ears. We know the Bible, but where the problem is, we got to start living the Bible. People are tired of hearing about the uh, preaching. They want to see a sermon. They want to see Jesus. I'll never forget this. I was at a convention one time, and this pastor got up, and he said these words. He said, how many of y'all want to see Jesus? Well, of course, everybody raised their hands. Everybody said, I want to see Jesus. He said, he's here today. Y'all want to see him? And Dr. Tony Evans, a lot of you know Doc. He's profound. He said, how many of y'all want to see him? How many of y'all want to see him today? Five, y'all are in trouble. Oh, y'all in trouble. I'm going to show y'all Jesus. Y'all ready? Come here, Jeremy. Here's Jesus. I love you. That's Jesus. You say, Brian, I bet that was awkward. No, maybe to you because you don't hug. Notice a lot of times the best sermon that can be preached is no sermon at all, just a hug. Maybe you're at work and maybe the best sermon that day is give somebody a handshake and say, man, I'm praying for you. Maybe you making a phone call today to somebody who you've been disconnected to a long time. Say, listen, I know I'm not spoke to you in a long time. But I just wanted to call and tell you I'm not forgotten about you. And I love you. Pray God. You know, the sermons are easy. They really are. Today's the icing on the cake. What I've done all week and what I've studied for, I get to proclaim today. The hard part is, y'all ready? Walking out that door and walking out that door and going back out to a mean, lost, dying world that wants to cuss you out, wants to make fun of you. But I, I praise God I'm at a church. And me and Courtney talked about this a while ago. That we freely come in this house and freely worship God. Amen. That we don't hesitate to raise hands. We don't hesitate to know that there may be a gun held to our head. When I was in China, I'm telling you, the underground church, you ought to see these people. You ought to see these people. They run to church, and if they get caught, they get killed. And we are begging people freely to come to church and freely give God the blessing. And you can't get them out of bed on a Sunday morning. We are the most blessed people in the whole wide world. Listen to me. Share Christ. The sad truth is Christians in America are the majority, but we are doing very little to speak out as a witness of the Lord. For some odd reason, I hear this more than I hear about Jesus. I just can't do it. I'm scared. I've got fear. That is none of... Jesus don't talk like that. Jesus don't talk like that. Jesus will look at you and say, um, I didn't give you that spirit of fear, but I gave you the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. I didn't give you that old spirit of fear. I gave you all power, all dunamis, exeazo. 
I put the dynamite in you. All you got to do is let the Holy Ghost light the wick. And when he lights the wick, something, somebody's going to get exploded on you. You know what I'm saying? Listen to this. One Sunday, as they drove home from church, little Susie turned to her mom and said, Mama, there's something the preacher said this morning that I, that I don't understand. And she said, what's that, honey? Well, he said that God is bigger than we are. <laughs> that God is bigger than we are. He said that God is so big that he can step out onto nothing and hold the whole world in his hand. She said, Mama, is that true? Is God so big he can step out onto nothing and reach out like that and hold the whole world in his hand? The mom looked at her and she said, yes, Susie, that's true. The mother assured little Susie that what the pastor said was true. And with a puzzled look on her face, she said, Mom, so that same God who stepped out onto nothing and who can hold the whole world in his hand, the pastor also said this morning, he lives in me. Is that true, Mama? And she looked over there with, and she said, yes, Susie, that's true. And here's what she said, Susie asked. If God is bigger than, than us, and he lives in us, wouldn't he show through us? If God, we preach, I feel him. If God is so big that he can step out onto nothing and hold the whole universe, the whole world in his hand, Isaiah says, and that same God that we proclaim that died on the cross. And after three days, the resurrection. And God says, I've, leave, I've left you all power. Even greater things, John chapter 14, verse 12. Greater things we will do than what I did when I was on the earth. If that same God who stepped out onto nothing and held the world in his hand. If that same God lives in me, Jimmy, shouldn't he be showing through me? Jamie, shouldn't hit this? Shouldn't that Jesus that hung on a cross that we get excited about and clap about? Do you realize who's in you? I want this word to get in your spirit this morning. Because so often we walk a defeated life. We put our heads down and we say, I just can't do this. Oh, you're you're wrong. I can, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Be not because of you, but because who's in me. That means if you're at work, ask at the hospital, keep your God eyes on. Keep your God eyes on. Be waiting for somebody to, to walk by you. Keep your God eyes on. I'm down at the park pitching. got a softball in my hand and pitching with little girls, but I got my God eyes on because I'm looking. I'm waiting for somebody to cross my path that I can bless and I can help because I've got something in me that is bigger than the whole world. Matter of fact, the man who is in me, think about this, sis. The man who is in me and you holds the whole world in his hand. So listen, whatever you're going through today, don't you think the God who can step out onto nothing and hold the world in his hand and he lives in you, don't you think he can get you out of the mess you're in? Come on, y'all got to give God more praise than that. He's going to get you out. He's going to bring you out. That doctor's visit, I know we got to have docs. But I got a good physician in me, hallelujah. When I don't feel good, I go ahead and just prophesy. I'm going to live to be an old man. Gray hair like Brother Tom. I may even have a goat tea. I may highlight my, my goat tea down here black and have, have, have salt and pepper on. You know what I'm saying? Salt and pepper. I will. I pray for a Harley Davidson too. I'll mess y'all up. Preacher come in 80 years old on a big Harley. Chaps on. I ruined that moment. Sorry. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is this. We got to pray for America. We got to live a righteous life. And we got to start sharing Jesus. It sounds so simple, but evidently a lot of churches are not doing it. If y'all want to see God explode in your life, I'm telling you, follow the B-I-B-L-E. If you want a victorious life, follow the Bible, and it will happen. Huh. Ruth Ann Graham Lotz was asked this question. 
praise team, you guys come. This is Billy Graham's daughter. She was asked, where was God during 9-11? I'm sure y'all was probably asked that too. Where was God in all the, sh- the school shootings? All the terrorist acts? And she said, it's pretty simple. We've asked God to leave. It bothered me at first when I, st- when I read that. She said, we've taken prayer out of the school. We only come to God when we need him. And she made this last statement that I'm going to give to you, and I want you to write this down if you can. God will not come where he's not welcomed. God will not come unless he's invited. Unless he is welcomed in. Most people, and y'all know I'm speaking truth and preaching truth today. Most people live the kind of life they want to live. And turn when they want to turn. Act the way they want to act. Do what they want to do. But someday, preacher, I'll get it right. How many people have you seen come back to church in a crisis? And as soon as they get through the crisis, You don't see them no more. So I started thinking about what does God want to do at Elkhorn. Jared, God wants to be welcomed in our life. If you've got dirty hands, God won't land on you. Y'all know Mary in the Bible, the mother of Jesus? You know why he chose a 14 to 16 year old little girl, 16 years old, pregnant? Pregnant, Daniel? What would happen today at a Baptist church if a 16-year-old little girl walked in and said, I'm pregnant, the Holy Ghost got me pregnant, I'm going to have Jesus. Y'all think I'm laughing and I'm kidding? That's what happened. That's what happened. She was packing something precious, my God. You are packing something so precious in your life. It's called the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, the reason why Mary got chose is because she was clean. She gave a clean place for the Spirit to land. Does that make sense? And God is wanting to land on your life right now. God is wanting to touch you like never before. See, God wants to change the church. God wants to change the people. But the people are so stinking hard-headed. I deal with it, Jamie, every day of my life. You know what, man? God just spoke into my heart. Have you ever seen a church call a business meeting in order to go soul winning? Have you ever? See, tonight we're going to have a special called business meeting. And tonight we're going to go soul winning. That's a business meeting. That's God's language. I'm telling you in the name of God, in the name of Jesus, God is looking for a pure, clean, holy place to put His Spirit. God wants to land on your life. Are you giving Him a place to land? Do you got dirty hands today and trying to hold the anointing of God? It will not work. That's why, think about this, 1,800 pastors monthly get out of the ministry. 1,800 pastors monthly get out of the ministry. The number one reason why? Pornography. Pornography. And everybody says, well, they shouldn't be doing it. You shouldn't be either. Well, they shouldn't do this and they shouldn't do that. Watch this. We all need more of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We all need to have clean hands and a pure heart to hold the anointing of God. We got to quit judging the world and we got to clean our houses up. You say, Brian, this is tough. I didn't say it's going to be easy. God didn't either. He just said it'd be worth it. So, my commission to us today, including your pastor, are you riding dirty? Is your hands dirty? Can the Spirit of God rest on you? Are you sharing Jesus? Are you living a righteous life? 
I remember when I was young. Here's Chapel Baptist Church, Brother Omer Farmer. He's the dead. He's in heaven now. The man who led me to God. I remember that man would preach so hard. Scare me to death. Scare me to death. And that's the old Baptist preaching right there. And I'm going to tell you, the Methodist, there used to be something in the water with the Methodist church too. I went to a Baptist church, to a Methodist church, and I'm telling you what, I felt the fire of the Holy Ghost in Methodist church. We need the Spirit of God back in His house. We need some good old preaching. Some good old Holy Ghost. Good old Holy Ghost preaching is what we need. The Spirit of God is what draws people. You say, well, Brian, all y'all do is hoop and holler and evangelize. Yep. Because three-quarter percent of the world's lost nine going to hell. When we solve that problem, maybe we'll settle down a little bit. But until then, we're going to give them J-E-S-U-S.